welcome to this video documenting our eight day whirlwind trip through Utah. As you'll see, there was no way to take a bad picture if you even tried. The whole state was incredibly beautiful. We were terribly shocked in the best way and even Poppy agrees. <laughs> so enjoy. Before we start showing you the amazing footage we got, we do want to say eight days probably isn't enough time to go and actually explore everything Utah has to offer. It was a huge whirlwind of a trip for us and our driving was the equivalent of coast to coast of the whole United States in basically a week. So if you're going to Utah, this is a good place to start and reference, but definitely give yourself more time. But for now, enjoy the hot springs. Meadow Hot Springs is a geothermal hot spring located a little bit outside of Salt Lake City, and it's also a boondocking spot on private property, meaning you can stay here overnight for free. We chose to do that, got in very, very late. You'll see this footage a little bit later, but we woke up in the morning and this was our breakfast. We came here, sat and soaked, and it was wildly out of this world. Apparently there's a river that runs underneath the hot springs um, that circulates the water. It was cool and it was also a really good chance to test out our drone. <laughs> so because we were on such a tight timeline of getting in so many hikes, locations, destinations, once we soaked in the morning, we walked back, uh, made breakfast, and took in the view for a moment before honestly hitting the road again. hot spring in the world we're gonna roll it back a minute and show you our introduction into Utah and all of the traveling and driving in between and we'll probably bring it back to Meadow Hot Springs at least once stopping we stop in to dump the trailer and get gas but if anyone who's ever had me on snapchat knows how i feel about the loves gas station stops they're the best thing ever so in utah apparently i'm gonna look over here there are mavericks now i'm gonna assess if they're anywhere near as good as loves or there might just be a new contestant in the, the best show ever which is which gas station has the best stuff. Okay. Utah is already much nicer than Washington State. So we got into Utah. Is not a, Maverick is not as amazing as Love's. It's just impossible. So yay, we made it to Utah. Uh, we passed through Salt Lake in the dark, unfortunately but it looked beautiful. And we also laughed out loud at all these signs pointing us to Las Vegas, but then finally arrived at Meadow Hot Springs. It is 1 a.m. We finally got to the springs. Uh, and there, there is a car that some teenagers have worked into the fish turned sideways. It, they just look sideways like they were messing around with Peter things. After many, many hours of driving, our agenda for the next morning was simple. Sleep in, make some breakfast, and soak in some hot springs. We then went and drove all the way down over more towards Moab after that, but a few hours versus well over 12 felt like a piece of cake and the weather was perfect.
we then arrived at Dead Horse Point State Park in the perfect amount of time to hike the Rim Trail, which actually is dog friendly and a super, super accessible hike for all abilities and ages. Keep in mind that as it's a state park, your National Parks Pass won't be valid here. Poppy, where'd you go? After hiking Dead Horse Point State Park, we went ahead and started looking for a camp spot for the night. There's a lot of boondocking availability around Moab, Arches, and all the parks around there. However, if you do want a campsite, you should think about reserving months in advance. We woke the next morning before sunrise to hike one of the most popular hikes in Arches, Delicate Arch. Just After hiking Corona and Bowtie Arch, where we got our first little taste of the ropes, ladders, and hiking style of Utah, we got back in the car and headed towards some boondocking spots outside of Bryce Canyon. When you choose to explore national parks with a pet or a dog on board, you do have to be intentional about how you hike and when. Luckily, Bryce Canyon had a 1.1 mile hike that was pet friendly, but continued on further into the park. No pets allowed. So we took Poppy on that and it saw some amazing views, though we definitely want to come back to Bryce and do a little bit more of the canyons. Suddenly we were on our last destination. We were on our way to Zion National Park a bucket list item of millions of people each year. We had a lot of hopes and dreams about hiking some of their beautiful canyons and it really lived up to our expectations. We can tell you one thing for certain, coming out of that tunnel and seeing Zion's canyons for the first time was absolutely breathtaking. We were shocked and in awe, and we immediately knew it would have a place on our top national parks in the United States. We were so fortunate.
fortunate and blessed that somebody gifted us a spot at the Watchman Campground, which is in Zion National Park, meaning that we could go and explore super easily via the shuttle. One, no matter the season or time of year, the water is going to be very cold, and you often can't see the rocks beneath your feet when you're walking on them. So a lot of people will opt for neoprene socks, waders, and other rentals that you can get in Zion, but we decided to use our own shoes we had, and they worked out super well. And thankfully, it was a warm day. The water was not as bad as we thought, and we didn't go as far as we initially anticipated. However, we felt like we did the Narrows just right. Then we went into town, rented some e-bikes, and it was time to prepare for the big hike. We were gonna hike Angel's Landing for sunrise. It's five o'clock in the morning. No, it's actually 4.30. We're gonna do Angel's Landing, are we? We go on secret night time mission. <laughs> It's so early, but we have e-bikes, so it's gonna make this thing so much better. <laughs> start to say anyone in reasonably good physical condition with reasonably good physical balance can do this hike. However, we really don't recommend it to every single person because there were some very scary moments. It is likely the scariest hike for both of us ever and we have done some pretty tough climbs. That being said, panic aside, when you get to the top of Angel's Landing to the summit, and the sun comes over the mountain for the first time that day and there's not another soul up there, that's a feeling you couldn't find anywhere else. took a small detour to Bonneville Salt Flats where we missed the sunset entirely. By the time we got there, it was dark. So we took the opportunity to take some photos under the stars. Bonville Salt Flats, we traveled through Nevada and spent one of the coldest nights to date in our trailer. Hot, but we stayed right outside of the, at a rest stop last night and the Aldi heater is still not working and it was so cold. It was in like the low 20s. <laughs> we woke up to full sunshine and 30 degrees, so we got right back on the road. It's such a good trip. Yeah, like three hours. He was driving until almost four o'clock last night. Well, thanks for adventuring with us through a whirlwind of a week in Utah. We were really impressed by that state. 
and we will definitely be going back in 2022.